Welcome back, good morning and good afternoon wherever you are. Welcome back to this other new video. Uh, this first of all say thanks for everyone that watched the last video. Um, uh, all the likes and the comments, people that have subscribed, welcome to the channel. Uh, right, I'm going to get straight into it. So, I've got a Iveco, it's a Euro Cargo, so it's a small little rigid thing. Um, it was previously diagnosed for non-start and was said to have uh, flat batteries. So, they've changed the battery on it, it tried to start but doesn't start, turns over very, very slow. I'll try and show you um, now and then I'll show you what I mean. So, I'm trying to down. I'll show you now. Watch it turn over nice now. See what I mean? How slow it is. So yeah, is it turning over very nice? It is slow. I've tried uh, when you turn ignition on, sort of comes out to 25 volts. Uh, so we've got plenty of sort of get up and go, especially. Shut up. As it's had new batteries as well, so I'll do it again. You can, you can feel how slow it is. So, plug it in first, have a quick scan just to see if anything comes out. Otherwise, we're going to have to be looking at Earth's uh, start of everything, all that sort of stuff. So, let's get cracking into it. Right, so I've done a scan. Um, nothing's coming up yet. Nothing really that's showing about it. So, I'm going to have a look around. Look at all the air straps, chassis, and everything like that. See if we can see anything obvious. Um, one minute it turns over all right. I don't know if it will now. Yeah, it's fine now. Now it's turning over all right. I'm gonna leave it for five minutes. Come back and try it again. But yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not perfect. I know that. So keep looking. So there's our. Who I was put on before? I battered it. The earth, which goes through the chassis that way and obviously our power supply goes down here so let's get under here uh, uh, that's probably not going to help the situation is it that's the power supply and obviously back out through that way so what we'll do is we'll disconnect it we'll clean all this up anyway um and then we'll have a go at it again and then we'll follow the earth and check all that at the same time right so i'll give it a clean um the main port part here is all clean uh probably wants to do a little bit more but we can give it a test now to see if it's any better so to see if it's any better So unfortunately I didn't get to finish that one off, um, I have heard it starts now uh, and that seems to sort the issue, so, which is good. But we're going to go on to our next job and um, this is a tire hydraulically. Now I found out where it's coming from but I'm going to show you the leak. I'll leave this here and then I'll show you where it's leaking. Oh, yeah. 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 So, as you can see, the ram is leaking, so we're going to have to put the ram on. I've not done one of these before, so I'm going to be learning as I go along. So yeah, this should be uh, an interesting one to do. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to get all this off here, mag the mag bow, unbolt this, get the pipes out of the way, pipe here, and there's a pin that goes through here. We need to get that out. We might have to take this one out of the way to knock the pin out, but we'll have to look. And obviously, there's a pin down the bottom here, so... Let's get cracking on. Right, so I've got that pin. This is the bolt that holds it in. And then pull the pin out. 
back in that one. And then it's exactly the same at the top here. So all we need to do now is to reverse. So that's the ram fitted. Now we just need to see if it works. Right, let's try this. Thursday morning. I'm absolutely knackered today. Um, our next one we're looking at now is um, they've complained of. Let me find it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? So basically, they've complained that it's non-start, or when it does start, it takes ages to start. Uh, and if you left over time, struggles to start again. So let's let's try it first and then see what happens. So let's have a look. Mission, see if we've got any lights on. We've done some mileage this one. A million kilometres in a little seven hour tenner. Oh, okay, so let's give a go. Oh yeah, that's fucked. That is fucked, mate. Probably say start and ring it up. Right, so now we're going to have to get this box out. Um, got the cover out. We're going to take the mounting bolts off there and there. Get that linkage out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'll take one, two, three, four top gearbox mounts out. And then get it up in the air. We ain't got to really worry about the top then. Uh, take it off. This booster. So what I've done is marked on here a line straight down. Can't really see it, but I can have where that link is. So I know we can get that all right the way then. Right, so what we need to do is get a prop off, booster off. We need to get this exhaust out of the way to be able to get a box out. Uh, and then ring a box, pull it out easy. So these are just 15mm bolts and uh, I think they're 17mm nuts. So they work very tight to be fair. Um, so we've got them bits done, which is the easy bit. And then obviously from here, we have to get the exhaust out of the way to sort of get the box out of the way. Maybe some people could do it with the exhaust in the way. I'm not sure, but yeah. So I'm getting a booster off there and obviously then the exhaust. So And then it's about then time to um, pull the gearbox out. It was actually quite surprising how quickly and easy these clamps came off because normally they're seized as anything, they don't want to come off. But the only one I had a problem with was the one at the silencer, 
that was the only one that snapped and everything else actually came apart all right so yeah it was um surprising if you know you know so that's that off come with a bit of like that one uh one two three four five six bolts to get out this is getting a jack underneath so all i would use is a little strap like this um wipe it over the top and that should then secure our gearbox so people in the comments will go, you don't need an axle stand that big. It's too big for that gearbox. Yeah, well, that's the only one I could find. So, And you know what? It did the job perfectly. I put a block underneath the front because the back has a bung on it and it won't sit level. Getting the gearbox level coming out will make your life 10 times easier for when you want to put it back in. And now we have it. The box is out. Just need to drop it down. So now it's just a case of whipping the clutch down. Uh, it looks like it's a clutch, not that long though, so. It's not that old, that. And now just. Box to get out. So there we go. A bit mangled there, there's teeth missing there. To be fair, it's not as bad as what I thought it would be. But obviously that isn't great. Obviously the starter isn't it the best of shapes either. So next day, uh, we've got to get the starter out, so I've dropped the down part just to give us a bit more access to this down here. And then we're going to take these two bolts out here, drop the ramp down. Um, actually we'll get the ramp down first, do the top up, get the bolts out and then we'll come down here and do the bottom. Just makes it easier to pull the starter out this way than it is to pull it out through the top. Some people might pull it out through the top but I find it's easier just to do that. So get the ramp down, um, get the connected off the top, I'll show you them. Yeah, yeah we'll pull it out and I'll show you the uh, Mac and Star one. So I'm just going to quickly show you this. So you've got that little wire there, it's your signal wire. You've got the power cable at the back there, the big nut on it. And then where the top of that solenoid is at the top, that is where your earth goes. So you have earth, power, and then a signal bar. So we'll get that off, get that bolt off there, and then we'll lift the ramp up and get the uh, bottom one down. Right, so, here. Oh. Here's our new signal wire. So, earth on here, power supply on here, signal wire on here, so, pretty simple. Um, Obviously you have your power supply, you have your earth and you have your signal wire. When you turn that ignition and then you flick that key round, that will shoot that out and spin that. It will shoot this out, spin it, which will then turn your flywheel, which will turn the ring gear, which turns on the crank, which has the pistons, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Pretty easy to fit. Um, only three bolts. On top, so always remember to disconnect the battery. It's common sense, isn't it? So gonna get it fitted and then we'll carry on with the rest. So I'm gonna quickly go through uh, about removing this ring gear. All we'll do is we'll chisel this off, just knock it straight off. And when we put the new one in, we will uh, put it on axle stands. So it's stood up will place the old one around it because it won't go straight on. We'll heat up the it, um, ring gear, we'll heat it up and it will literally just pretty much fall on. You might have to tap it a little bit but it will literally just fall straight on. So let it cool down and then that is in because when you obviously heat metal it expands or it'll expand the ring and then let it cool down it will close up and then we'll fit onto the flywheel. So here's our new friction plate. That is just an old input shaft we used to line it up. 
it does say fly wheel side on it so you can't get it wrong. So yeah, all I do is fit this up here. Like that. And then uh, pressure plate over, bolts in, let's get it on. So that's a new release bearing on. Uh, now we're going to line the gearbox up and uh, we're going to slip it back in. So here comes a little bit of adjustment. As you can see, the box is straight. Um, line it all up, get it roughly where it needs to be. You will have to adjust here and there, but hopefully you'll see in the next couple of seconds it go in. So because it's a manual, you knock it in gear in manual, uh, turn the output shaft and it will spin the input shaft which will help you line it all up properly if you do an automatic you obviously have to um, use a pair of grips to turn the shaft but it should just hopefully just slot straight in so all the gearbox bolts back in boost is in clutches have got um, exhaust on just that clamp to fit there now it's a case of putting the prop on um, and then jumping at the top, put the gear linkage back on, and then we should be able to go for a start. Right, so next job we're going to do. Um, I did get the video out Saturday so I'm literally going to carry this on and then film with it a little bit more and then sort of put it out for the next video God, I look tired. Um, this has got uh, smoke coming out of it quite a bit as well it's like a grey coloured smoke um, which suggests it could be sort of coolant related or anything like that and also struggles to go in first third or fifth I think so let's have a look at that uh check the coolant we're going to check all that first and then um we'll go from there and see what we actually find right so i didn't actually get to um film yesterday our phone was playing up and yeah it's just a bit of a nightmare really yesterday um i have the selector issue um i found out it's had bots it's had turret and it's had linkages um i was stripped yesterday took it off the box the linkages check all that make sure that was all good so yeah that was all fine um and diagnosed for the gear lever so i'll quickly show you this show you what i got to take off um and then we'll go from there so here's our gear linkage we've got two cables going in this one is for your side to side and then the other one is for your up and down these are adjustable um we've got one mounting bolt there at the back there so we're going to get that off now this has got a little board shot this one's quite easy it's got a clip that goes round here and you sort of pop it off and then this one's obviously got a little nut in there so i'm going to start getting this off we'll try that and then um we'll see if it's any better So it's a little bit more in depth than what I thought. Uh, the two, there's another two mounting bolts at the back. So I've had to strip this, but luckily this sort of splits in half, which is a good idea. Um, and then we've got to get them cables out of the back there. You can see them just there. They've got to come out. Looks like someone's cable to the back. Um, and then we should have it out then, I'm hoping so. So yeah, let's uh, try and get them cables off. So we have got this one out, it's just this one to get out now, and the whole unit should literally just pull out, he says. Uh, I don't know whether this has been touched before, but yeah, it is what it is. It's, uh, it isn't too bad of a job, it's just a little bit fiddly that is all, so I'm going to get that last one out, and then uh, we'll have a look at it when it's off. There it is. 
off. Easy enough. And we've got to get this off here now. Um, but yeah, it's quite a simple thing. Obviously, you have your forward and back movements. So this is side to side. And then the other one is forward and back, I'd say. Let's get the new one out and um, let's get that one fed. So here is our new one. Just comes complete like that. Uh, this one feels a little bit more... Hmm, what's the word? Stiffer. It's got a stiffer shaft. So, yeah, it's uh, it's better than the other one. It's de the other one's definitely worn away a bit. So, let's get this bolted in. We're going to do the reverse of what we did. I didn't actually need to take the... and bolt this from, from there because you literally just pop it off. So, I just didn't see it. So... Let's get the new one together and let's give it a try. Right, so what we need to do now is make sure it works. It don't feel as... Let's see. One, two, three, Definitely feels a hell of a lot better. It's nice and one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, one, just a second. One, mm. definitely feels a lot better. So this vehicle obviously has ABS fault on it. Uh, it's been diagnosed before and it looks itself uh, near side rear wheel speed sensor. So it's coming from a mechanic failure and the exciter ring is in a pretty bad state. So I'm going to get the stripped off half shaft out, nut off, chamber off, caliper off, and then pull the hub off and split the disc and go from there. So these are not too bad to do, so let's uh, get cracking. So what we're doing now is just undoing the caliper bolts, 18mm on these top and bottom three bolts. So once we've got these off, get the caliper off, I left the pads in, we're pull it all off as one, and we get the hub nut undone, and then pull the hole off. So I've cleaned the hub up, uh, just makes it easier for the new disc to go on. We'll put some grease on just to slot it on, but now it's time to put the new disc on. So, we have our new disc. I'll put some copper paste around this hub, slot it on, bolt it back up. So that's the disc all on, hub nut torque to I think it was 730, half shaft back in, uh, as you can see, new ABS sensor put in there, knocked onto the exciter ring and we're all done by a caliper. So we're all back together, putting all this back together, they're a bit of a pain, they're very fiddly, but we've got all that, we've adjusted the brakes, and we get a caliper on, shot caliper the chamber on, and then uh, wheels back on. And then this side's done.